Hey, it's uh, Dan Morales. This is Home Buyer Radio. I wanted to continue the series that we're doing on the four C's of credit. This week, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about capacity, right? So the four C's being cash, credit, capacity, and collateral. We talked about cash uh, two weeks ago. We talked about credit last week. And I apologize. Last week's episode, you know, I kind of bounced around <laughs> trying to cover just multitude, a multitude of quick uh, bullet points in regards to credit because there are just so many moving pieces when it comes to credit. Uh, you know, so I might kind of come back to that one in one of the weeks to come here. Uh, but it's still worth a, a good listen because there's a lot of quick information that we covered in last week's episode. A week before that, we talked about cash and, you know, cash down payment and cash reserves and stuff like that and how that, you know, relates to this mortgage process. And then this week, what we want to do is we want to talk about capacity, okay? You know, what is capacity? Well, capacity is, you know, really comes down to kind of a, a debt to income ratio, meaning how much debt do you have on a monthly basis and monthly payments in comparison to your income? Because somebody who carries a really high load of debt may have some difficulty being able to make a mortgage payment, uh, you know, if their debt ratio is too high. So, you know, what kinds of things are lenders looking at? We're looking at, you know, the credit that you have outstanding. What are the monthly payments on those debts that you're making a regular and consistent monthly payment on? And what is that cumulative total when you add, if you will, your new mortgage payment as part of the equation, okay? So when you look at a mortgage, you know, what kinds of things are we looking at? We're looking at what is the new principal and interest payment going to be? What are the property taxes? What is the homeowner's insurance cost going to be on a monthly basis? And do you have any mortgage insurance that you're going to have to pay as part of that? And are you part of an association where you're going to have some kind of association dues as part of what you're paying as well, too? Now, those are typically tied to, you know, condominiums and or co-ops, uh, you know, that you would run into some kind of association due as part of that. And sometimes you have these large neighborhoods that have association dues as well. You know, maybe they have a community pool or something like that, where they have a regular, you know, monthly due or they have an annual, you know, due, uh, you know, a, you know, neighbor I live in, you know, we have an annual fee, if you will, you know, for dues to be part of the association once a year. Uh, not uncommon to run into those as part of something. And that's something you should understand and you should know when you get ready to write an offer. Uh, as a side note, if you're moving into a neighborhood that has an association, you should probably read the bylaws of that association uh, just to make sure that there's no rules or restrictions or covenants that are part of that association uh, that would be a deal breaker for you. So make sure you're talking to your agent about that if you are looking at something that has an association. Okay. Now that's a side note. <laughs> Let's go back to talking about monthly payment. So you, when you qualify, we're going to look at, you know, what are you putting down and what's that new proposed payment going to be? In addition, we're going to take into account the association dues that you would have as part of that. So that is what is known as, if you will, your housing component of the debt to income ratio. So typically the lender is going to run two different ratios. They're going to run what's called a housing ratio and they're going to run a total debt to income ratio. Now in the good old days, uh, lenders looked more at that housing ratio, uh, you know, it, separately from the overall debt to income ratio. Uh, I would say, you know, more recently or, you know, over the last, you know, probably decade or so, you know, there's been less emphasis on the housing ratio. Uh, when in all honesty, there there probably should continue to be some kind of, you know, importance in looking at that housing ratio. But what happens is the lender, you know, is focused mostly on your overall debt to income ratio when it's all said and done. Now, what happens is we're going to look at, you know, the new proposed housing payment. We're going to look at, you know, do you have car payments? Do you have student loans? Do you have installment loans? Do you have credit cards? You know, do you have, you know, finance loans? We're going to add up the sum of all of those monthly payments. Now, if you have student loans and those student loans are deferred, uh, depending on the type of loan you have, we are still going to count something typically we're still going to count something for a student loan payment as part of what we're doing. And student loans uh, continue to be a big issue for a lot of folks, right? Um, you know, because, you know, as the cost of going to school goes up, uh, so does those loan balances, which can impair people's ability to be able to get a mortgage at some point in time in the future. Now, uh, I do want to have a quick kind of side notes here in student loans. One of the things that I run into, and this this always amazes me, is I'll have clients who will have you know fifty to a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, and in some cases you know quite a bit more, and those loans are being deferred. Okay, I, well those loans are deferred. You know I don't have to make a payment on them yet. Blah blah blah. Okay, great. 
do you know what the payment is going to be on those student loans when you start to make repayment? And I can't tell you how often people have no clue what those payments are going to be. Like before you took the debt out, didn't you take the time to understand what you were going to have to repay? For many of you, the answer is no, you didn't. You don't know what those monthly payments are going to be when you have to start to repay them. If you are going to come in and buy a house, you probably should know what those payments are going to be when you have to start to repay them. Reason being, if you are going to commit to a mortgage payment, you better understand the impact of those student loans on your budget because the amount of house you may be comfortable buying may be different when you take those things into account. I can't tell you how many times people have no clue on what their student loan repayment terms are, but yet they're in my office to get a mortgage and they're going to commit to a mortgage payment of X number of dollars without fully understanding their complete financial picture. You set yourself up for a problem when you don't when you don't understand that, right? Because just because we may count a percentage of that payment uh, when we qualify you, maybe that percentage we count is more than what you're banking on when you budgeted. Maybe it's different, you know, right? Like maybe your payment ends up being different. Maybe it's more than what we we counted when we qualified you. You know, just because we have an industry standard that we use doesn't mean that that makes sense for you to move forward with. So please understand the terms of your student loan before you go buy a house. Understand, you know, what your repayment terms are going to be so that you can make sure that you are doing something where it's sustainable and you can, you know, that you're going to be okay moving forward, you know, when it's all said and done. So, you know, we're going to look at those things, student loans and car loans and credit cards and all that stuff. You know, one of the things that, you know, more and more lenders are starting to look at is, you know, what are you paying for housing now, right? Are you, you know, are you paying rent of $1,000 a month and your new house payment's going to be $1,200 a month? Okay, that's, you know, a 20% increase. Uh, you know, is it reasonable that you can afford that increase in, in payment? Or are you going to suffer from what's called housing shock, where, you know, maybe your rent's $1,000 now and your new mortgage payment's going to be $1,500? Well, if you have a $500 a month increase in your housing expense, do you have a track record of being able to save enough that you could afford that five additional $500? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe you can afford it now because you got a different job and you have more income. You know, there's all of these little pieces that go into making a good loan that, you know, they matter, right? These are all things that matter when it's all said and done. So, you know, we're going to look at, you know, what debts do you have? Do you have enough income to repay those debts? You know, some clients are banking on always having overtime or always having, you know, record commissions or, or stuff like that because, you know, part of what goes into that, you know, debt to income ratio is income, right? You know, so what, what do you have for income and what can we count towards income? You know, are you a, you know, hourly employee? Are you hourly plus some kind of incentive or commission? Are you all commission? You know, there's all of these variables. Like this is a really kind of tough episode to cover because you're talking about, you know, monthly debts, but then you're also talking about income, right? Like, you know, what I always like to tell clients when it comes to income, is it stable? Is it consistent? And is it likely to continue? If the answer is no to any of those, then eh, maybe some of that income can't be you know, counted when we qualify you. And if we can't count that income, then maybe your debt to income ratio ends up higher and then maybe you don't qualify, <laughs> right? So, you know, when I talk about these types of things where I say, hey, you know, the expertise of your lender matters. It matters, right? Because if I don't ask you the questions and I don't understand your income and I don't understand, you know, how much cash do you have and where's that cash coming from? And if I don't understand, you know, what your debt position is, you know, and, and stuff like that, and I don't understand, you know, your overall, you know, if you will, credit history and all these things, you can start to see where you know, these four C's of credit, you know, kind of matter. And, you know, how I stitch all of these pieces together to get your loan submitted for approval matter and why we ask the questions we do and why we need to understand the things that we need to understand because they all matter when it comes to getting your loan approved. So it's important that you work with a lender that knows what they're doing. And it's important, by the way, that you answer these, you know, the questions your lender has honestly. Uh, I can't tell you how many times people have given me answers that are either deceptive or dishonest. Uh, let me tell you, we always get to the truth. Okay. <laughs> like we always get to the truth. 
you know, when it comes to mortgages, you know, I like to think of, you know, President Reagan's uh, saying, you know, trust but verify, right? We verify everything and we're going to figure it out. Okay. So just tell us the truth right up front. Make this process easier because if we can find a way to get you a loan, we're going to do our best to do that in a responsible way that makes sense. Okay. So it's really important that you cooperate and you're truthful in this process, that you understand the big picture because really my job is to help serve you to put you in the best possible mortgage I can. But I also like to know that, you know, we helped you get into a house that's sustainable, that it's one that you can keep long term, that you're not going to lose because we set you up for failure or you didn't understand the terms of what you were doing or you didn't know what you were getting into. So it's really important you have a good lender that's going to ask the questions, that's going to connect the dots, going to put the pieces together to help put you in the best possible position so that you can win long term. Hey, I'm Dan Morales, America's Mortgage Man, NMLS number 709 729, phone number 616 931 4629, online at danmorales.com, D A N M O R A L E Z.com. And of course, North Point Bank is an equal housing lender. Have a great day.